Today is the 16th of October, 2010. We're at the Hotel Thayer in West Point, New York. My name is Wayne Clark. I'm with the New York State Military Museum. Uh, my assistant is Mr. Mark Merrick. Sir, for the record, would you please state your full name and your date and place of birth, please? Bernard Marotznik, born June 8, 1925, in Manhattan, New York. Did you attend school in Manhattan? No, I did not. We moved from Manhattan in 1931, and we moved to Brooklyn, and I attended school in Brooklyn, PS 226, and then on to Lafayette High School, where I graduated in January 1943. Do you recall where you were when you heard about the attack on Pearl Harbor? I don't remember exactly where I was. I think we were home. It was in December. Uh, I really months. can't remember. No. All right. Okay. When you went into the service, were you drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted. And you were drafted into the Army? I was drafted into the Army Air Corps at the... the in Whitehall Street where you went for your preliminary induction into the Army to mm -hmm. see whether or not you were going to be taken, be drafted. There were the uh, four service people in death, the Army, the Navy, the Coast Guard, and the Marines. Mm -hmm. And as a result of my resume that I had handed in, uh, the Army guy says, no, he's my guy, he's going to the Air Corps. Because I had attended Casey Jones, which was eventually the, new, the Academy of Aeronautics mm -hmm. at uh, LaGuardia Field. Had you done any flying at all? No. And uh, once you were drafted into the Army Air Corps, where did they send you for your basic training? Greensboro, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And then from Greensboro we went to Goldsboro for training as a mechanic. What type of engines did you work on? Were they the radial engines or inline engines? They were engines? radial engines, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you recall how long that school was for? I was in school for about three months because they shut down the school. They needed men overseas mm -hmm. and they sent me overseas. Without completing the course? Without completing the course. Oh. Now, how did you get uh, overseas? We went overseas by boat to Louis Pasteur, mm -hmm. which was a French boat seized by the British at Oran when the French capitulated and manned by an English crew mm -hmm. carrying American soldiers overseas. Did you get seasick at all? No, I was not, no. Mm -hmm. And whereabouts did you land? We landed in Liverpool. We marched through Liverpool to a reception center where the, I was then assigned to the 452nd Bomb Group of the 8th Air Force and Squadron 731. Mm -hmm. Had you ever heard of the 8th Air Force before? Yes, yes, I did. And how did you feel about being assigned to the 8th? I was very happy. Mm -hmm. Very happy being assigned to the 8th Air Force. And what were your living conditions like? No problem. Everything was fine. Nice barracks, and very helpful people mm -hmm. in our barracks because I was a replacement into the 452nd Bomb Group. And uh, being that you were sent overseas without completing your schooling, your aircraft schooling, did you uh, train under uh, people in the unit as like kind of on-the-job training? Yes. Yes, my crew chief was a fellow from Oklahoma, and he trained me. Mm -hmm. 
Did you, did you do any flying at all? No, the only flying we did was when we, after the war, we flew in to Lucky Strike and we took back our PWs, our, that had been, our flying crews that had been incarcerated during the war, uh -huh. and they took them back to our camp. And I went on a food, one food mission mm -hmm. after the war. All right. So you, uh, did you stay in the same general area or did the unit move at all? No, same area. Mm -hmm. All during the war. I got over in February of 44 and we flew home June 28th of 45 after mm -hmm. the war was over. Okay, so you were over there a little over a year. Yes. What did you do on your, what was your daily routine like? Well, we were a four-man crew, a four-man ground crew for, uh, assigned to an individual aircraft, mm -hmm. B-17, which we maintained the, the airplane. We gassed it. We did uh, minimal maintenance because we had all of our other people that were uh, assigned to the squadron, particularly the electricians, the prop men, mm -hmm. the um, uh, engineering for the purposes of replacing any of the uh, parts that needed replacement after a mission, mm -hmm. particularly the outer wing panels. We had an engineering company. We basically uh, we gassed the plane we pre-flighted the plane prior to missions. Mm -hmm. Now that plane you were assigned to, did, did it have a name? Yes, I was assigned to the Flatbush Fluji uh, most of my time until it went down in Poland. Okay. Did, did it have any kind of nose art on it? Any kind of painting or? No, it's... Or just the name painted? There was a big... No, really not. I don't recall All right. it, it having a painting, although there were many planes that were painted mm -hmm. as the Petty Girls. Uh -huh. and, and there were bomb uh, pictures of bomb, paintings of bombs uh, when the mission would come back, when the plane mm -hmm. would come back from the mission, and they would uh, uh, paint a bomb for every mission that the plane mm -hmm. went on. Were you friendly with the, with the air crew? After my first few months being a, a mechanic on the ground, I s sought not to be friendly with them because they were, many of our planes would go up, and I would know the people and wouldn't come back. Mm -hmm. It became very an emotional situation for me. Mm -hmm. There was only one crew that I was really friendly with there was a fellow who I played baseball with at high school, and I met him on the line going out to the plane. He had just been assigned to the 731st, and I used to sweat him out for every mission. He was the only one I really was friendly with. Mm -hmm. He was a pilot, and uh, the name was Harvey Green, and I was off for the Jewish holidays in September of 1944. And I came back and I went looking for him and I was told that his plane went down. Mm. And it was emotional for me. Uh, and I used to go periodically to G2 to find out if there was any anything about the plane. There was nothing about the plane. They didn't see any shoots. There was, they have no report mm -hmm. of anything of the plane. And what was it? the war went on? That was September '44, and I was home July '45 for 30 days before we went back to South Dakota for assignment into a B-29 outfit. And uh, I saw a guy riding a bicycle in front of the house of my parents, and I ran after him. It was Harvey. He was repatriated. He was a PW for oh. a period of time, and we made a friendship, and mm -hmm. that's an interesting story. Mm -hmm. 
Now, now the uh, crew that you were assigned to, you said they went down in Poland? The Flatbush Luigi went down in Poland, yes. Now, did the, was it that uh, same crew or was there another? No, it's a different crew. Okay. Army did not fly the Flatbush Luigi. Okay. Flatbush Luigi went down. Incidentally, the, uh, uh, one of the gunners of the Flatbush Fluji uh, was uh, taken as a PW, and he was eventually uh, repatriated also. And matter of fact, I saw him last week at a reunion oh. of the 452nd. Now, was he the only one that got out of the plane? Was, yes. Oh, okay. Although the original crew of the Flatbush Fluji made their 25 missions and they went home. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, captain of that ship was a fellow by the name of Ray Kurtz. Ray Kurtz was a city fireman. And he did his missions, he went home. And after the war he was recruited by the Israelis and he flew to the Israeli air. Air Force, oh. uh, bombed Cairo, mm -hmm. and came back home to ferry a plane back to Israel, and he went down in the Arctic. Uh -huh. They never found him. Mm -hmm. okay. What did you do on your time off over there? Try to go to London. For a period of time, they didn't allow the ground crew into London. Into London. They kept it all to the uh, uh, flying crews. Mm -hmm. and Eventually then, you got to go? Pardon me? Eventually you Eventually got to go? Eventually they gave us the opportunity to go. Mm -hmm. And so we worked hard. We had a one day off periodically. And we visited Norwich, which we were stationed mm -hmm. about 15 miles from Norwich. And they had a lovely castle. And, uh, you, you spent the day. Mm -hmm. How were you treated by the English people? Very nicely, no problem. Mm -hmm. The English people were great as for, to me. I, uh -huh. I had no complaints. Mm -hmm. What about uh, the equipment you work with and, and the clothing? Uh, what, was that adequate? Yes. For the weather it conditions? Was, it was so fortunate that we had so much mm -hmm. of the equipment. We had winter clothing, we had summer clothing, then coveralls that we were able to work in very comfortably. Mm -hmm. Did you get to see any USO shows or any celebrities at all? Yes, we had uh, various uh, shows for our 100 mission party and our 200 mission party. We had Curtis LeMay came to our 200 mission party. Mm -hmm. It was comfortable. Everything was comfortable. Now, now, when did you go back to the States? I went back to the States June, the latter part of June, I think the 26th or the 27th of, of, 45. of 45. Let me let me just go back a little bit. Do you recall where you were and what your reaction was when you heard about the death of President Roosevelt? Yes, we were all uh, taken aback. We were in our barracks at the time. We were working. And uh, his death sort of took away a lot of me. Mm -hmm. and he was probably the only president you really knew. Me? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was only 19 at the time. 20, matter of fact, when he died. Mm -hmm. So the war ended in, in Europe. Was there a lot of celebration? Yes. On May, in first day of the ending of the war was a uh, festive day on our base. Matter of fact, one guy went out to the line and took a 50 caliber machine gun out of the plane and was spraying the air over our barracks. Oh boy. I got under my bunk. I said, I'm, it's a hell of a time to die. Mm -hmm. And I got under my bunk and I stayed in there for the night mm -hmm. until all the festivity was finished and the uh, 50 caliber machine gun was 
retrieved by the MPs. <laughs> so you went back to the States with, with the idea or thought that you guys were going to be sent to yes. Japan? We were going, we went back to train for, into B-29s. Mm -hmm. And Now where was that training? We were getting ready to be assigned. Okay. And the war was, it was in South Dakota. Mm -hmm. And the war was over that one afternoon where it came over the radio that we had bombed Hiroshima and we had bombed Nagasaki and the war was over. Mm -hmm. Then I was transferred to Lockburn Air Base in Ohio for, for being assigned to a, uh, an airplane, which I flew as a flight engineer uh, in conjunction with them shooting landings for West Point graduate pilots. Uh -huh. And this was a lovely air base really like a country club, and uh, I was there until November 5th of 45. And was that when you were discharged? No, I was sent to uh, Fort Dix, and then on to um, Newark, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Wickaway Center in uh, Newark, where I was discharged. On November the 6th, election day. When you got home, did you make use of the 5220 club or the GI Bill? No, I did not make use of the 5220, but I went to school. Mm -hmm. I went to NYU, I graduated, and then went on to law school, Brooklyn Law School, and became a lawyer in 1953 by my being admitted to the second department in the state of New York. Oh, and you obviously retired from that position? No, I'm still working. Oh, you are? I'm still working. <laughs> well, good for you. My son is in practice with me, Uh huh. Michael, and uh, we, I try not to work on Friday, uh -huh. but unfortunately, something always comes up on Friday. Uh -huh. and, and how many children do you I have? I have three. I have a daughter. Carol, who's a lawyer, works for the city of New York. Uh -huh. I have a son, Charles, who's a lawyer, who's in private practice. And I have Michael, who's a lawyer, and is in the same office with me. Mm -hmm. Is your wife still there? No, my wife was the chief judge at home. She would <laughs> take over any of our problems, but she was not a lawyer, she was a school teacher, uh -huh. and she passed away. Oh. In 04. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. All right, well, thank you so much for your interview. Thank you ever so much for having me and giving me a lot of remembrance. It was an honor meeting you. You too. Thank you very much.